Yes, the Pomern is back. Now that secondaries have been buffed, I think Pomern just might be the most fun you can have for 228,000 coal. This ship is such a good time. You get 12 guns, yeah, they're 380s and the dispersion sucks, but you still get 12 guns with actually pretty good range. 21.3 kilometers base. It's actually more than the Kerfurst gets at tier 10, which is kind of nice to have, given that the meta can be so campy. This ship, of course, heavily relies on its auxiliary armaments, I guess we'll say. This ship, I tend to have an even-ish split of my damage from main guns, secondaries, and torpedoes. That seems to be the normal Palmer game, which makes it a lot of fun, actually. It's a ship that excels in a lot of areas where maybe the majority of the premiums wouldn't, and that is at closer ranges. I think that close range brawling is some of the most fun you can have in this game. I personally find sniping from the back of the map pretty boring, and having a ship that excels at close range is just more fun, in my opinion. So if you're looking at a Palmern and you've thought in the past that maybe this would be a good ship, and you've held off on it because of the secondary change with 10.0, I think now is a great time to pull the trigger on it, assuming you have the coal. I would not recommend you spend money on this ship, um, but for coal, I think it is worth it. It is a really, really good time. I loved this ship when it came out. I thought it was a ton of fun. And now I haven't been recommending it more recently just due to the secondaries being heavily, heavily, heavily nerfed. But in their current state, I think the secondaries might even be stronger than they were originally. They have more range. And after maybe 25 seconds or so, 30 seconds, you have better accuracy than you had even before the uh, commander rework. And that's due to the built in 22 ish percent buff that Wargaming gave these uh, secondaries to make up for the massive nerf they did in patch 10.0. And now that they've somewhat undone that with the new commander skill that gives you the gradually increasing secondary accuracy, you actually get better dispersion at the very end of that build up, right? It does take some time, but I have found that it is possible to get yourself in secondary range for long enough that that actually does matter. And at this point, we've already got 62, 63 secondary hits, sorry, a couple citadels and 50k damage. We're not even, <laughs> we're not even five minutes into this game. Of course, I am very fortunate to not have to deal with a carrier. That is a massive downside to Pomeran. You only have 5.2 kilometer AA range and let's be honest, the AA doesn't really do a whole lot on this ship. So. If there is a CV, you're going to be forced to play farther back, and you're going to be forced to play around teammates with some decent AA. You can even mount a spotter plane, or a fighter plane, sorry, to somewhat deal with the planes. Um, of course, they're not all that reliable anyway. So, yes, it does struggle in those CV games, but at least you do have the range to somewhat snipe. Um, yeah, dispersion will be frustrating. That is not the game that you want to see, but... A match like this does happen fairly often because you're at tier 9. You're not at tier 10 where there is the possibility of having a CV at your tier. Tier 9 often will face even just its own tier, all tier 9 games, and you're guaranteed no CV then. And even if you do face lower tiers, you get the potential of facing a tier 8 carrier, which, let's be honest, they are nowhere near the power level of the tier 10 carriers. So a lot of the time you are able to push up in a Pomeran. The other thing I want to mention about this ship and why it's so much fun, even compared to some of the Tech Tree German battleships, like the FTG, for example, the Tech Tree Tier 9, well, this ship gets torpedoes and hydro. The gimmick of the German battleships, of course, is having hydro, and you get that, you know, from the Bismarck up to the Kerfurst. And one of the things that made the Tirpitz unique was just having the torpedoes instead of that hydro. But You've always, you always felt like you were kind of missing something on the Tirpitz with brawling. When you push in, torps hurt, especially because the torpedo protection is not amazing on these ships. Uh, it was really nice to have Hydro, and Tirpitz kind of feels a little bit lacking in that department. So having both the Hydro and the torpedoes is really, really, really nice. It's much more comfortable to play with that Hydro. And in closer range brawling situations, which you're more likely to get into in the ship, sometimes it can feel like 
you put someone into a bad position and you know you're brawling let's say an Azumo or some other tier 9 battleship and they're bow into you you're pushing at them and then they accelerate and you're like oh what am I gonna do they're just gonna come ram me and of course you could turn out and try and go broadside and run away and dodge the ram but then you're giving broadside and you're probably gonna take a huge hit anyway and maybe even die so Having torpedoes as a threat at closer range is really, really nice. It tends to keep people from going for those rams. And if they do go for the rams, they're probably going to eat a face full of torpedoes, which is really, really nice. Um, and that is one of the reasons I think Pomeran can be even better than the FDG, even though the Freddy at Tier 9 is a really, really strong battleship in its own right due to the better dispersion than Pomeran, higher caliber, you know, you get to overmatch some more things with the 406 or 420s, and of course the reload. I can get my FDG reload down to around 22.9 seconds on the little guns with reload mod, and that's before AR or anything else. So that is very, very fast fire rate. You're approaching the Jean Bart levels, and you have even bigger guns than the Jean Bart. It is a surprisingly good tier 9, the FDG is. So Pomeran competing with that. It does lack the reload, it does lack the accuracy, but you get a lot of main guns and you get the torpedoes. I think it's a fun alternative to the Freddy. I don't think the Pomeran is outright better than the Freddy. So if you're not feeling like spending all that coal or you don't have the coal to spend, um, well, you can just play the tech tree and still have pretty much the same experience. You have a little more overmatch flexibility, but you don't have the amazing fun that is the torpedoes. Uh, of course, the biggest issue is permanent destruction of those torpedoes. They don't have a ton of HP, so even while you're running the Auxiliary Armaments mod, like I am in this game, it, well, they do permanently break. So then you're forced to deal with that as a player looking to rush in for torps, and then your torpedoes break before you get them off, and you're just kind of left as a sitting duck then, which is really, really unfortunate. It would be so nice if you could heal them back, or if they just had more HP to begin with. Of course, I am running the Auxiliary Armaments mod also for the secondaries. They don't seem to break nearly as much as the torpedoes do with the Auxiliary Armaments mod, but they still can break. And of course, the downside of running Auxiliary Armaments mod is you're not running main armaments mod where, well, even a single shell from a Soyuz is enough to kill our front turret there. So that will be a bit of a theme where you have to decide if you want to keep your secondaries, AA, and torpedoes alive a little more, or you want to keep your main guns alive. I don't think either one is the correct answer. I think they're both very, very good options. Just depends on what you want to focus on. Of course, having 380s, essentially Tirpitz guns, at tier 9 is not amazing, considering the Tirpitz guns aren't even that good at tier 8. So we are actually shattering on the broadside of this Soyuz at three kilometers. That's how poor the penetration is. And I'm sure you've noticed the dispersion as well. It's not been amazing at these closer ranges. But that's what you have torpedoes for, right? So we get a couple torpedo hits and this guy's a little bit too angled. So the armor's even thicker and we get three shatters. That uh, top shatter, the shell that went high, I think that went into his turret. That's why it shattered. It wouldn't normally shatter on the upper belt. So I go for my right side torps and I hadn't been paying attention in this game, so <laughs> there's a situation right there where, oh no, my torpedoes aren't around. Fortunately, there's a Musashi with Overmatch to bail us out of that situation. But a pretty classic Pomeran game with 356 hits out of our secondaries. We are running Gunther Luchins, which gives us that massive, well, somewhat massive secondary reload buff. And uh, what a fun match. I think that's what this ship really is. It's just fun. And if you're a battleship player, looking to brawl especially, this is just a fun ship. If you're not a brawling battleship player, you're not interested in that playstyle, I don't think you need this ship. I think you should pass. You should go for something more like a Salem or a Moskva or a Marceau. There's plenty of good coal ships available right now for you, and those would probably all be a better choice for you. But if you're looking for that brawling action, this is a great one to go with. Just remember, like I said in the Republic video, if you go in full secondaries, 
expect to lose or at least expect to die the vast majority of the time. But every once in a while, you'll get a game like this and it'll feel like it's worth it. Just look at that, 40,000 damage from our secondaries. I'm not even running IFHE and a bunch from our fires and floodings and torpedoes. So over half our damage was done outside of our main guns this game. <laughs> and that, I think, is a typical Pomeran game. A typical good Pomeran game, I guess we'll say. So the way I have the Pomeran set up right now is a little odd. And it was the build that I was talking about a little bit in my Republic video. I am foregoing all concealment. <laughs> so hear me out on the reasoning, but here's the build. The commander skills right there, and then I'll quickly show you the equipment as well. We're running the full secondary build, and ship consumables, and steering gears. Everything else is pretty standard, I would think. But let's talk about this build for a second. I think that Concealment is not really necessary on a secondary battleship. It is so useful to push in. It's so useful to help you get to forward positions without being detected. I think it's awesome for that. However, I think that if you need to use concealment to get closer to the enemy, meaning that if you were spotted, you'd be getting shot at a whole bunch and you'd likely die, that means you probably shouldn't be pushing in your secondary battleship anyway. So if I get rid of all concealment, then yeah, I'm spotted from longer distances. And yes, it is harder to get those surprise shots on cruisers and that kind of thing. But let's be honest, most people are pretty aware of what's going on or they just run incoming fire alert and the game tells them what's going on. But so then concealment is less useful, I think, in those situations. So on a full secondary battleship, this is what I've been trying for the last little bit, and I've really been enjoying it. So we're taking emergency repair expert and fire prevention. I think you have to run fire prevention on every battleship build. If you're not running fire prevention, I think you are just not even running a fun build. You're, you're not even running, an, you're definitely not running optimally but I don't even think you're running a fun build necessarily just because this skill is so good in fun or optimal builds. So realistically, I think emergency repair expert, concealment expert, and fire prevention are still the best three skills you can take on a battleship. But if you are run wanting to run secondaries, it is seven points that you do have to sacrifice out of some survivability or some offensive capability. So. With the remaining, I have decided to take Emergency Repair Expert, giving me extra healing on top of the uh, extra charge, you get 10% action time. So that'll be a little bit of a theme later on here. And then Improved Repair Party. This is a weird one. So Adrenaline Rush is better. You're right. I know you're right. But personally, I do not find I have an issue dealing damage in my battleship. Battleships do a lot of damage. That's what they do well. Long range, close range, big guns, lots of damage, generally. So if I'm not struggling with damage, why would I take a skill that boosts my damage when I'm actually struggling with staying alive in a lot of these scenarios? So that's the thought process here. And now you might think, well, basic survivability is just better, right? You get 15% less duration on your fires. Well, let's think about that. 15% less duration on fires equates to, you know, two to three thousand damage per fire right so odds are you only have one fire on you due to fire prevention helping you out there so that's two to three thousand damage per fire that you're saving well maybe this extra healing gives you more than that back per heal and if you get to your heals faster you're healing back all that little bit of extra fire damage you would take that's the thought process feel free to disagree with me i'm not 100% set on this at all, but that is my thought process. I will get to my heals much quicker. If you look back throughout this game, I wasn't pointing it out, but I was checking the heal time, and I can get it down to that 60 second range on Pomeran, and maybe even close to that 30 second range on something like a Massachusetts. This is what I have been running, and it's been working pretty well, actually. Now, on to ship's consumable modification one. <laughs> I think you'd probably be 
well within reason to take concealment. This is so, so good. Not only does it give you 10% concealment, but it gives you 5% dispersion to enemy ships shooting at you. So also helping with your survivability. However, I am taking the extra consumable action time. That pushes our heal to last 34 seconds. And well, with those massive, massive heals, I think I'm better able to deal with that incoming damage. I'm also taking the rudder shift module because I want to be constantly on the move. I want to be dodging as much as I can. And as we build up potential damage, our heal comes back faster with our skill. And there's some synergies going on here. So that is the thought process behind this build. The thought is that, yes, I'll get two to 3,000 damage back with basics of survivability, but what if that two to 3,000 damage back just means that, well, my fire ends sooner, and then I'm getting HE spammed by people, and I just get instantly relit on another fire. And then that two to 3,000 damage isn't really even saved at that point. I think that if I am in a situation where I am under so much pressure that I will probably get another fire lit on me, I'm probably overcommitted anyway, and I would die anyway outside of basics of survivability. I am trying to take more hit and run style engagements. I am trying to take more engagements where I know I can get behind an island for safety. I know I can disengage for safety. And then I can use these heals to heal back up. And I don't think that's going to work all the time. I don't think it works for me all the time, but it is a way of playing the game that I'm trying out. It's different. And so a more standard build would certainly look at running basics of survivability or adrenaline rush. Maybe you drop emergency repair expert, you go double concealment and adrenaline rush, and then you take main guns here and you take concealment mod here and you take damage con here, and then you're a stealthier ship that's closer to secondary range before you get spotted and you're a little better with your main guns as well. There's a lot of different ways you can build it, and I think that's awesome. A lot of flexibility, a lot of fun to be had in this ship, and if you have it, definitely give a bunch of builds a go. I think 10.7 here with the free captain retraining or redistribution of skills that you can do, as well as the free demounting, as you can see here, we can just demount for zero doubloons. And just like that, we have another slot open, so I could try main battery mod 3 next time. So it's really fun, a great time to experiment, and Palmern I think is one of the most fun ships you could be playing right now if you're interested in secondary battleships. I think the German battleships, as far as secondary power, might have finally surpassed the premium American battleships like the Massachusetts, Georgia, and Ohio just because they have nearly the same accuracy but with much more pen on their secondaries. So, Something else to try might be IFHE on these secondaries. You will give up Vigilance. Vigilance is so nice just because we're up to 32% torpedo protection damage, up from 25. That's a pretty massive increase. And, well, you saw how far away those torpedoes were getting spotted earlier in the game. Hydro plus Vigilance equals insane lead times and knowing where torpedoes are coming from. Five kilometers. If you're running full speed and you have momentum and you're able to, you know, you've got rudder shift mod, you should be able to dodge torpedoes, even if you're broad, caught broadside onto them. Five kilometers is a lot of time. It's really only the really fast stuff like Holland that you'd have a tough time dodging at five kilometers still. So that is the thought process behind the Palmer and some other secondary builds that I'm running. But go out, have some fun. I think if you've got the coal, this is an amazing pickup if you're a at all interested in that secondary brawler action game. Even if you don't play it all the time, it's fun to just take out once in a while. Who knows, maybe there'll be some more uh, PvE style content in the future with some tier 9s and that, and that way Pomerant would be amazing. I would love to see more operation style events and maybe do some different tiers. and. Something like a Palmer with full secondaries and that could be hilarious. So don't bank on that though. Get this ship if you want to play it in random battles. That is it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Maybe learned something or I gave you something else to consider when it came to these builds. So yeah. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.